Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I got you some more um, scripture. And we're going to check this out. And This is on the faith. Some faith. Uh, a lot of us have and some of us don't. Um, well, I guess everyone has faith in something, in a way. But a lot of people have faith in the wrong thing. So let's get into this. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. Otherwise, would they not have stopped being offered? For the worshipers would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. Annual reminder. So the law is a reminder of our sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. <coughs> Excuse me. First he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them. Though they were offered in accordance with the law, then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when his when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First, he says, This is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. We know the laws, see? Our sins. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that this, his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Mm. More encouragement. We need more. Yes, Jesus, I love you. Yes. And if we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment. In of rage fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? 
who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Remember those earlier days after you had received the light when you endured in great conflict full of suffering? Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were, who, uh, with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison, joyfully accepted in confiscation of your property because you knew that yourselves had better and lasting possessions. Mm -hmm. Our kingdom, King Jesus, that's going to be awesome. So do not throw away your confidence. Confidence. It will be richly awarded. You need to preserve. Oh, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God you will receive that receive what he has promised for in just a little while he who is coming will come and will not delay and by my righteousness one will live by faith and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back mm. shrinks back huh circle back but we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Faith. Mm. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was invisible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when he spoke when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death he could not be found because god had taken him away for before he was taken he was commended as one who pleased god and without faith it is impossible to please god because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him by faith noah when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. <clears throat> he lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from him, this one man, and he, as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. Mm, we're not from here, are we? People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. 
if they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would had have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when God testified, tested him, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead, and so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. <coughs> Excuse me, this allergies. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Ishua in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. <clears throat> By faith, Moses' parents hid him from th for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as a son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his award. Keep your eyes on the prize. By faith, he left... Egypt, not fearing the king's anger, he persevered because he saw him who was who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute, Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. Mm. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon. Barak, Samson, and Jephtha, about David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lion, quenched the fury of flames, and escaped the edge of swords, whose weakness was turned to strength, and whose, who became powerful in battle and rooted foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refused to be released to, so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonments. <clears throat> they were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, dis destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Faith is key to everything. Regardless of you, who you are, it does not matter. Keep your eyes on the prize, the faith. I don't care if you're a prostitute, a druggie, a knucklehead, a criminal. It does All that stuff don't matter. Keep your eyes on the prize. Keep building your faith. Keep strengthening yourself through God, through Jesus, 
through the Holy Spirit, which you will receive. You'll see. And just keep feeding it because we feed our bodies all the time. You got to feed that spirit too. It's hungry. I love y'all. Um, yeah, I read two chapters. I'm sorry, but uh, that was good on faith. Um, keep pushing. Stand firm. Always love. Always love. Love is key. Regardless, love is key. Um, you know, no worries. Um, keep your faith no matter what. No matter what you go through, always keep your faith. God will direct us where we need to go. Jesus will keep us strong, you know, our spirit strong, our love strong, and we'll be able to conquer any task as long as you have faith. Because that's the key is faith. We are loving God. We're doing all this through faith. We wasn't there. They had the chance back then when they see Jesus and the ones before never even seen Jesus and had faith for Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice, the one sacrifice. The others didn't matter. But um, anyways, I love y'all. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share. Um, and also, anyone has prayers, put it in one of the comments anywhere. I'll find it. I'll put a little short video, get some um, prayer warriors up. And um I love y'all and I'll talk to you all soon.